Alrighty guys, this is Andrew and welcome back to another episode of Wednesday Winbox, which is basically like an inbox slash mailbox series that I do where I go over uh, some current events related to Overwatch, maybe one day beyond Overwatch, some of your questions that you guys submitted from last week, and boy do you have a lot of questions, uh, which is good, which is great. And finally we'll do like a win of the week type clip where I show you guys something interesting that you guys uh, submitted. And uh, before I forget, what episode is this? Five? Yes, we are on the fifth episode. One, two, three, four, fifth episode of the Wednesday Win Box. If you guys missed a previous episode, be sure to check out the playlist down below in the description. But without further ado, guys, let's get right into it. Um, the two pieces of news that I want to go over here for Overwatch are, are, are both from Jeff Kaplan, who is the game director. And uh, this, this stuff is pretty exciting to me. Now, the first one is him addressing the one hero limit in quick play or at least the uh, prospect of sort of integrating those two together. Now the whole reason why this became an issue and this is the short version is that because there's a three week break I think it's about three weeks between season one and season two for competitive a lot of the competitive people are kind of bored and just not happy with playing quick play anymore because quick play does not have the one hero limit, um, among other things, of course, there's tons of differences between quick play and competitive, but that's sort of the main one. Anyways, Jeff Kaplan, game director for Overwatch, he basically gave his kind of short statement on his thoughts on this, and it reads, we know there is a strong desire for the same rule in quick play. He's talking about one hero limit. Uh, we have some ideas of how we might introduce this concept without removing the ability for people to enjoy the game the way they do now. It's not something we're moving super fast on because we know there are people People who enjoy the game both ways and we want to make sure that everyone is represented uh, but we hear you we're actively exploring how to have the best of both worlds for folks right now thank god jeff kaplan is thinking about it because um for, for me personally like just having that one hero limit between seasons like it'll be it'll be a great sort of holdover because right now i'm just hiding out on the ptr you know <laughs> hitting up the hitting up the competitive scene there uh even if it's not for points i don't care i just like the having i just like having the one hero limit now what i'm gonna guess they're going to do is introduce a second queue i can't imagine them taking away quick play how it is right now completely um so I, i'd imagine they do a second queue where people can uh try out you know the one hero limits but not go all the way into competitive and in my opinion this would be a great sort of addition because then you would have this middle ground between full-on competitive and full-on casual quick play uh, you know you can have people from quick play who never tried out competitive maybe try out the competitive rule set you know maybe get a taste for what it's like before kind of committing jumping into the competitive scene if they want again this is just sort of speculation of course uh, blizzard may come up with a different approach but you know to me this would make the most sense now the next thing I want to talk about would be about cosmetics and how Blizzard is thinking about adding more options and more freedom to kind of play with those we're talking about emotes we're talking about skins uh, to kind of explain though someone on the forums asked about having like a random emote in game type thing because we currently have a random highlight intro option uh, Jeff Kaplan actually responded to this saying we want to work on the ability to allow you to have access to more of your customization options i.e. multiple sprays emotes etc uh, which is pretty cool in my opinion because it really uh, I don't know I just feel like end game players would have a lot of these sprays and a lot of these emotes so it'd be kind of nice to have more options to play around with uh, now the next thing that he mentioned though it was kind of further down the same thread which was him responding to someone asking about the ability to change your skin before a match starts. So instead of manually going to the hero gallery and having to select then come back out, uh, have it all kind of start up right before a match starts so you can kind of choose what skin you want. Now, in my opinion, this will come in handy as players play the game more, unlock more stuff, right? Say you have, I don't know, two or three Tracer skins that you all really, you, you really like them all equally or something. You're just kind of like swapping through them. Uh, so Jeff Kaplan said in response to this, uh, he says, We also would like to give you this option. Our design for it allows for changing skins during assemble your heroes, but not after that phase. We want people to be able to change their skins before a match, but we also don't want people changing skins mid-match. This feature has been on our list for a very long time and is something we really want to make happen. It usually gets deprioritized for other things. Uh, so it sounds very, very promising what he's saying here. It seems like we're going to be getting this uh, hopefully soon, 
but it looks like Blizzard is really prioritizing where they spend their manpower and resources on. Uh, because this is more of like a cosmetic type thing, I'd imagine they want to iron out gameplay related stuff first. So either way, I am really excited about this. And, and just in general, like I'm really happy that Jeff Kaplan is, is so transparent and, and, and so responsive with people uh, on the forums. You don't see that too much. Anyways, moving on, let's go to the questions, the Q&A, right? Uh, last week you guys asked me a lot of questions. I got a lot of comments and I'm really happy about that because uh, one of these weeks I'm not going to have enough questions. I can just kind of come back here to last week's ep episode and just kind of refer to those. But anyways, if you guys want to ask me more questions for next week, be sure to let, uh, leave it down in the comments. I love answering anything and everything. You guys can ask me random shit. It doesn't have to be about Overwatch. Uh, anyways, so first question here is from from Basil Zulig, sorry if I mispronounce your name, who is the hottest hero in Overwatch? Well, that's an easy one. It's gonna be Roadhog. He is so fucking sexy. He needs a little curvy, you know, which is great. You know, I, I love, I love a good old curvy. Okay, okay, wow, that's that's getting a little too far. But uh, second best, second best, I would say Widowmaker. That ass though is so good. Uh, Widowmaker is extremely sexy. I know they're all like video game characters and stuff, but like. I guess Widowmaker is supposed to be designed to be sexy. Like, look at her. She's like designed to be seduced, seductive, seducive, seducive reasoning. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that's who I think would be is is the most attractive, at least for the females. Males, Roadhog. Actually, you know what? Male or female, Roadhog, e easily. What is your favorite alt or combo by Cyano? Uh, favorite alt or alt combo? Uh, alt combo, there's a lot of different alt combos, but I like anything involving a Zarya alt. I feel like Zarya's alt is amazing, it is fantastic. It's like the playmaker. So if I had to say who, what is my favorite alt, it would have to be Zarya or Transcendence. I mean, one of those. I mean, getting a good Transcendence off to counter like a Zarya alt combo is just so satisfying. Um, but yeah, those are really my two favorites. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Next question. This comes from the Reptilian Brotherhood. Wow. <laughs> have you ever thought about live streaming? You know, I honestly have been thinking about it, but a few things. I would need a second monitor, and I don't know if I have the time investment to do it. Like, when you live stream, you gotta be, like, on, right? You gotta be on, amped for, like, two hours, three hours straight. And I don't know if I have the energy nor the, the time, really, to uh, to live stream and, and I kind of prefer making videos videos because it's something you can make and it's like you can put on YouTube and you can like look at it and be like wow I made that I don't know it's, it's just some weird psychological thing for me so for live streaming I don't know guys maybe one day I'll make it like a weekend Saturday night thing who knows it's, I, I, I really don't know I don't I don't know if there's a demand for it either so we'll have to see next question coming in from cataclysmic calypsis calypsis I don't really know. Uh, what is your favorite video game ever? Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, I have so many. I loved like Homeworld, that RTS way back in the day. Uh, I really liked the Pokemon games on the handheld, like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, some of the DS ones. They're all really good. Every time there's a new Pokemon game out, I have to buy it. So, uh, Sun and Moon hype. Oh yeah. November, I think, right? I don't know. I haven't been keeping up. Yes, I have. Other video games I really, really like, like almost favorite level, I, I really enjoyed Golden Sun. I don't know if you guys remember that, but that was a game out on the Game Boy Advance. It's a, it was an amazing game, I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, favorite genre though is easily shooters. I mean, shooters is just something I really, really enjoy. Right now, I, I'm loving Overwatch. I kind of wish Season 2 competitive would come back, but uh, other FPS games I really enjoy, Dirty Bomb of course, Planetside 2 of course, Battlefield, oh yeah, Battlefield 1 hype, uh, yeah, can't wait to try that out, I haven't had the chance, but yeah, sorry for the long answer uh, in response to a relatively short question, right? But anyways, let's move on to the Wit of the Week, which is a clip submitted by you guys. If you guys want to submit your clip, directions will be down in the description. Uh, but anyways, this one is coming in from Chroma9SVK, showing off his Genji highlight here. Now, he's on Hollywood, and it basically starts off with him trying to go for the wall climb into an ultimate. And as you guys can see, he gets, let's see here, one swipe, two swipe, and two deflect to melt the entire team Holy cow, guys. Holy cow. I mean, let's replay this because uh, I'm assuming because they they had mostly burst damage, so they had very little time to react. And, and by the time they output the damage, which was reflected back, they were already dead. 
Anyways guys, that was a pretty good clip I must say, but we'll have a bonus one, right? We'll have a bonus clip here, and this one was submitted by Feed Cola. Uh, as you guys can see, he is on Hanamura, going for the Swift Strike, but he gets absolutely tackled by the Reinhardt, and he was tackled so hard guys, he was sent through the wall. That's right, through the wall on Hanamura. Now, I, I have seen similar ragdolls like this in the past for my own, but I've never seen it go through all before. A kind of a funny little clip here, just for your uh, viewing pleasures. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, this episode of the Wednesday Winbox. Again, read the description for any sort of miscellaneous information questions you may have regarding submitting your own clips, and yeah, until next time guys, I'll see you around.